jump in this thing and see what it'll do. going on everybody well here's a question I get asked all the time do you want to sell any of your chargers where can I find chargers where where do you look for them how, how, how much does a charger cost so I, I get questions all the time about chargers which I mean I've got a few and I flaunt them a little bit so of course people always ask me and I got no problem answering questions and for one there is no real magical place that sells chargers. The, I mean, the place that I see them is the same places you find them as well. eBay, Craigslist, Facebook. Facebook is a really good place to find a charger reasonably priced, but you gotta be Johnny on the spot and jump on it the instant it pops up because usually if it's a good deal, a charger is gone within five minutes. You have a five minute window to see that car and grab it first because there is several people that are look that buy them and, fi and flip them or buy them, fix them up and sell them. And so if it's a reasonably priced car, it's gone. Um, so, and they have scouts. These guys pay them, there's people that uh, pay people money, you know, finders fees to find them chargers. So whenever they do find one, they get a, you know, say 500 bucks. So they're gonna be looking at Facebook, you know, and find a $500 char and find a charger for a reasonable price, send it to the guy that's looking for them and boom, they made 500 bucks. So. Facebook is a good place to look for them, but you have to be on there pretty much 24 seven to see that good deal and be the first one. And if the car is far away from you, chances are you're not gonna get it. And what you really don't wanna do is buy a charger sight unseen. Uh, there's a lot of hacks out there. People that just slap together a charger and get your money. So, this is a video to kind of explain what to look for. Um, I've seen all kinds of hack job repairs between chicken wire, cardboard, foam. Uh, it's all kinds of stuff that people use to hide rust or shabby bodywork um, or just mechanical cluster fucks. <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of go through some things on a car here. I have an example of a charger here that. It's kind of one of those cars that mm, the guy kind of got took. So this would be a good example to show you what to look for. Now, this is a good looking car from the outside. Now I'll show you in just a second. But I mean, don't be afraid to buy it. I mean, there's if you if you're buying a car from somebody that you know or is recommended, then that's different. But to buy a car from somebody you don't know, even I don't care how super nice the guy is. <laughs> hacks come with real friendly faces so just uh when you're going to look at a car don't act like you got a bunch of money don't flaunt it and in fact look poor as hell look like you just scraped up enough money i mean actually and actually you know what a lot of times i hear from people on social media hey i'm a teenager or you know i've been saving money for a long time i want my i want a dream car a charger 6869 or 70 you know, and so I hear a lot about these guys that saved up all their money to finally buy their dream car and they end up with a piece of shit because they didn't know what they were looking for. A rust bucket, bondo turd, polished turd, mechanical junk. I mean, so, and it's happened to friends of mine and I've gotten taken too. You know, years ago when I first started buying these cars, you know, I just wire the money, transport truck, show, and actually, you know what? I've got taken by a friend. You know, a guy I considered a friend took me. So what he, the condition, of, I didn't even bother asking for pictures of this car because I trusted the guy. You know, he told me what the car was and, I'm like, and he said, told me five grand. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, yeah, hell yeah. If it just needs trunk pan, quarters, floors, 
uh, rear window filler panel, valence, you know, five grand, done for a complete charger. Uh, or minus seats. I was like, oh yeah, dude, I'll, pff, easy, no brainer. Well, then when the car showed up, I mean, it looked like T-Rex took a bite out of the front frame rails. The torsion support was gone. Floor is completely rotted, which he told me that. The rear frame rails, done. Swiss cheesed out. Um, I mean, the car was a piece of shit. Rockers were done. And, you know, when I called the guy up, I'm like, hey, uh, did you send me the wrong car? He goes, well, what do you mean? I was like, dude, this thing is junk. Everything on this car is junk. It's nowhere near what you told me it was. Oh, well, you can part it out and get your money back. I'm like, you know, I'm like, mother, I didn't buy the car to part it out. And I wouldn't make my money back if I parted it out because the whole thing's freaking junk. But, you know, I just threw it back up on the internet for what I paid for it. And I was lucky enough to get my money out of it. But at least I made an honest ad letting the guy know what the car was. So, you know, there are some honest sellers out there. So, you know, don't hesitate going after your dream car, but also be aware of some of the issues these cars have. So, you found a car, called the guy, come to look at it, go into poor mode. Ugh. <laughs> oh. Ladies, try and restrain yourself. Men, just don't get jealous. It's time to go look at a car. All right, so you show up. You got a pretty car to look at, you know, it's not bad. Overall look of it is decent, you know, it's not my color, not my wheels, but you know what? Condition of the car overall isn't bad. And just to finish our little walk around right here. Now, this is one thing that I see happen all the time is somebody looks at a car on a picture or from a distance, you know, let's say 20 feet away. Sharp looking car, right? Well, so they automatically think it's a good car. Don't do that. Think it's a piece of shit. And prove yourself that it's a good car. So, our overall appearance on the outside, you know, not too bad. A couple little chips here and there. Oh, Sammy's chasing the light. Let's see. Okay, Sam. You gotta stop that. All right. Oh, see, right here, we got a few bubbles in the paint. So, now we got suspicions on the inside of the door that there might be some rust. Let's go a little farther down. Okay, Sam, stop chasing the light. Okay, here's a typical spot on a charger you want to look for. The quarters. Right here at the bottom. There we go. We see some bubbling and even a hole in the body where we can see the rust coming through. This is where the quarter panel and the rocker meet together on a charger. And it's typically full of lead right there. So what has happened is the water has come through the window channel. Okay, hey, Sam, you're in the camera shot. Back up, back up, go on. Back up, beep, 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 beep. Okay. So, so, like I was saying, water goes through the channel, runs down, and it gets caught and it drains here. If you look right there, okay. There's a little, well, let's say a dimple or a drain hole in the rocker. So water is designed, these cars are not waterproof. Water is designed to get in them and then just run out of them. So right here, we see that behind the lid, the metal has started to break loose or the metal has started to rot out or it's either on either side of the lid. Oops, trash. All right, so now we know that. So now we go to the wheel well. And this is all just the outside of the car. Where'd my camera go? There it is. So we're looking, we're looking. Look at that sexy reflection right there. Oh yeah. Okay, we're going down, going down. You know, it doesn't look too bad. You know, from what I'm seeing right there, this ain't looking too shabby. Now, we get to the back of the quarter panel, which is typically a rotted area. Okay, now I'm starting to see some bubbles. All right, we got more bubbles. Now we got a crack, which means there's Bondo there. And Bondo is not your enemy. I mean, typically when these cars are painted and someone, even on a really high-end paint job, there's gonna be Bondo or filler in the car. That's just to make it straight. So the metal on these cars was never straight to begin with from the factory. These cars were wavy. I mean, they weren't like the ocean wavy, but they were wavy. So it does take filler to straighten them out. So don't be afraid of filler or Bondo, however you wanna call it. 
So, all right, so we noticed that there's Bondo there. And there is supposed to be a seam here. Now the seam is missing because it's been filled over. So we go over here and we also notice, hey, the seam here has been filled over. So why? So this, that's all bondoed over. Now, some people will give you that bullshit excuse of, oh, I like the seamless look of the rear valence. Bullshit. So <laughs> let me show you quickly what that's supposed to look like. Now, this ain't a rust-free car. Actually, it is a damn good rust-free car, but it does have a little bit in the lower quarters. That's it. But this is just to show you, look, see, there's the seam right there, which this is seam filled, or a seam sealer. Goes right there. But right here, from the factory, there's not supposed to be any seam sealer. You can see that is a solid break. That is what an original corner, unfilled up, looks like. All right, so we're still on the ascent. We're on the exterior of the car, and we're still on the ascent. Now, the rear valence is notorious for rotting out on these cars. But what just caught my eye is, see those bubbles in the paint right there? Uh, that tends to make me think that there is filler in the tail panel. And filler in the tail panel, see look, there's cracks right there. That's a no-no. There's crack there, and there's bubbles. That's a no-no. More cracks. Oh, we got more cracks. Which means there's filler in the tail panel. What are they hiding? So there is never supposed to be any filler in a tail panel. Now, typically these things rot out around the corners and under the tail light because water gets in, but there's a seam uh, under the tail light. Actually, which I'll show you. All right, so this is a car that I had just repaired. This is an original tail panel. Actually, you can see right there, here's a spot that rots out on a charger. This is the backside of the rear valence support. Now, this side looks like that side. So, I made a filler, pan I made a, a filler, welded it in. Because we're trying to save the original look of the car, the original paint, so we're only fixing what we need to on the outside. Now, this was a prime example of what was rotted out under the tail light. This whole section right here was rotted out. I had to cut this square out, and I had to cut this whole section out, all that bare metal, so how I had to cut it all out. And there's two layers there. This is the outer skin, and then there's the inner. So I had to, when I cut it all out, I had to replace the inner before I could even get to the outer. So this has all been replaced. And you can see, this is a nice patch job. I mean, it's seamless. You can't even see where I stopped and started. If you look closely, you can. Like actually right there, you can see some of the welds. Same thing here. Now I'm gonna be doing the same thing right there. Actually right here, I can show you. See, there's actually, look, there's just a little bit of cancer right there starting to get in between the two layers, but that's not bad enough that we're gonna worry about it. <laughs> oh, my fabulous hair is getting in my mouth. Back to the car. Now, if you notice, I don't even have any tools on me, which when you're going to look at a car, you wanna bring a refrigerator magnet. You don't wanna bring a rare earth magnet that's gonna, that's gonna pull the car as you walk away with it. You wanna bring a really sissy, wimpy ass magnet that is going to detect the slightest bit of filler or rust. Magnet will not stick to rust. So we're gonna go grab that magnet. Pow, Pizza Hut to the rescue. Okay, Sam, you gotta give me a little bit of space, you camera hog. All right, now, typically these valence corners are rotted out. Now, is this going to stick to it? No. So that tells me there's either an excessive amount of filler or there's just a big giant hole there somebody has filled with Bondo. Let's check the rear valence. Nope, that fails. What about here? Ah, nothing there. What's your bet right here that it'll stick? Nope. What about right here? Ooh, oh, there's a little bit of metal right there. Now, remember this area here that had just a little bit of bubble stick? Sam, go on, I'm gonna put you in the house. Sam, inside, lay down. There you go. So, see, remember all these bubbles right here? Nope, fail. Let's see. The typical bad area right here on a charger. Oh, we got a little bit of metal there. Let's go right here. Nope, fail. So that means that's all filler. Right here, fail. You know what, this door looks a little wavy to me. Come on, Sam, the other way. 
Let's just see. Typical, okay, we saw a little bit of bubbles here in the paint, so let's stick it right there. Hey, it passed, so maybe the rot isn't too bad right there. We're gonna have to put Sammy in the house. All right, maybe she'll leave us alone for a little bit. Okay, here's a typical rot spot on a, on a charger as well. The bottom of the fenders, because all the salt, mud, dirt, water, whatever, flings up and gets caught in the bottom of the fender here. So, okay, we got a little bit of metal there. All right, so that this fender is okay. Let's see, where'd we leave off at? Before we grab the magnet. See, oh, we also want to look at the back window area here, which, you know, let's go ahead and give it a poke. Ooh, squishy, which either means the vinyl top has either separated or, see, yeah, I feel metal, so maybe my, maybe the vinyl top just starts separating. We all see the corners popped up too, which usually means there's a clip down there that holds this trim down. If the clip has, or if the trim has popped up, that usually means that that clip is rotted out and there's nothing there to hold it. Let's go check out the other side. And another thing you typically see is these corners are glued in because there's nothing to hold it in place. I don't see any glue on this one. Let's see, yep, that one's popped up too. Let's see, we got, oh, okay, we got some cracks in the uh, seam sealer there, which means it's probably excessive. Okay, we got a piece of trim here that's loose. Why is that loose? Either the nut's not on there or it's broken. So you got to pay attention to that stuff. We got a ding here in the trim, which means somebody really had to hammer to get this thing on here. Now, this is just walking the outside of the car. We're going to get in depth on this thing here in a minute. Oh, you know what? Let's just go ahead and check this spot right here. Ooh, fail. Fail. Well, look at that. We got a big old Bondo crack right there. So, let's take a better look at this here. Uh-oh. See, we got a bunch of Swiss cheese on the bottom of the quarter panel right here. You know, what is going on there? And, see, we got all that Swiss cheese there, but I don't see any of the spot welds right here. Which usually tells me that somebody has bondoed up the bottom of the quarter panel to hide all the rot. If you can't see the spot welds, it's full of filler. Which I can see the filler right here. See? So somebody's hiding something right there. And obviously we got a big hole there. And actually, if you look in the light just right, you can see there's a patch that runs along here. And we can see it in the bodywork. It's actually, the metal is already separating from the paint. I can feel the step. So there's a patch there. Oh, there's another patch here. I can see the seam of it. So we got a patch here and a patch here. Let's see, what else we got down here well, since we're here? Oh, I see some more bubbles in the door over there. So we'll have to take a better look at that once we get the door open. Oh, there is filler in this rocker. There should never be filler in a rocker. If the rocker is junk, you need to replace it. So let's give it the old test here. Oh, no, it's, it's okay. Maybe they just wanted to straighten it out a little bit. Sometimes these cars do need body work, like I said. Okay, well, this one might not be too, the rocker might be okay. All right, yeah, so that's good. If you know, we have a dent here. See how it's got a little up sweep to it? So there is a dent in the rocker right there. Let's go farther forward. Well, for one, I see a bolt missing there. And I see a Bondo crack right here. Um, so let's give it the old magnet test. Fail. So something is going on with this fender right here. It's either rotted or it's rotted and they filled it full of Bondo. The rest of the fender doesn't look too shabby. Let's go ahead and take a better look at it. Yep, see there's another Bondo crack right here. Let's see, the front valence looks pretty typical. You know, these, the front valences on these cars are rarely perfect because that usually sees a lot of damage, but this one isn't too bad. So I'll give this car this. The front valence is good. Ah, yes. The, one of the best parts of a Charger, the grill. Boom. Well, let's take a closer look here. Oh, I see a little something. Oh, see, the grill still has the dog ear, which means the grill is most likely not beat up. And is there any broken fins? No? Looks pretty good. Does it have another dog ear? Yep, has another dog ear. I do see a shabby patch repair right here at a crack. So that's not a big deal. Oh, there's another one right here. So 
Grill overall condition, not too bad. Now let's look under the car. When looking under a car, I always start at the beginning or the front because if the charger is rotted out in the front, most likely it is completely screwed in the back. So one of the first places I'll go to is the front frame rails. Now the front frame rails on a B body in which when I'm saying charger, B bodies are all the same. Satellite, Plymouth, or, or the satellite, the Roadrunner, GTX, Charger, Coronet. I mean, they're all the same. It's the same platform. So this works for all the cars. Now, right here is a typical rot area for a charger or a B body. I should say B body, not just charger. Because the frame rail right here, there's a divider here. And on the back side, there's a divider. And there's two big holes on top of the frame rail to allow water, mud, whatever to go to run through it but then it gets stuck inside the frame rail so what happens is it eats out the frame rail typically you'll start seeing a hole here or you'll start seeing a hole on the back side now i've already looked at this so i know there's no holes there so i can move on now all right here's typical rot spot number two the torsion support this is the support that actually holds your torsion bars which holds the car up this is the spring that goes to your front at or your front lower control arm these are typically rotted out right here. This is the typical rot area. Now, I've already looked at this car and I know both sides are good. So the torsion support on this car isn't bad. You wanna look at the frame rails too. This is all good. You wanna look for the ears. The, the flange on the uh, frame rail is still there, top and bottom. You see there's a little flange there that overlaps the torsion support. That's all good. Like I said, mentioned earlier, there's no holes in the frame rail up there. Usually you'll see it by the brake line. So, the front end of this car checks out okay. Now, there's a lot of sneaky guys out there. So you want to bring a screwdriver, not to unscrew anything, but to die, die, die. Oh, it's good. There's no holes. This was rotted, and somebody had tried to hide it. The screwdriver will just go right through it. All right. Now that we're under here, you know what? This doesn't look right. Now I didn't pay a lot of close attention to the floorboards on this car when I was looking at it earlier, but something here is amiss. There's supposed to be some uh, uh, dimples there in the floor. Hmm, let's take a, oh, look at there. We got a whole bunch of rottenness that somebody has just stuck a piece of sheet metal over. See, that's like pretty much flat there. And then we got some rottenness right there. So the floorboard in this car is rotted. Now. If the car is undercoated, a lot of times you can't see the rot. It can be there, but you won't see it. So take your screwdriver, which someone has already shabby patched this one. See, if this was unrepaired, you could just pretty much take your screwdriver and go boom right through it. Now, if somebody's gonna lock, not if somebody's not gonna let you bring a screwdriver, just I mean you don't have to kill the thing, but you know just check it. If it's a nice solid thud then you know the floor is good, which, see that's not a solid thud, that is. And I can see the whole driver floor on this thing is junk. Next. All right, now we're looking at the front side of the rear frame rails, which, you know, they don't look bad. Here's a typical thing you'll see. There's holes in the frame rail, these are, these are normal. But what a lot of guys times happen, if a car gets towed, the tow company will just put their hook right here and it rips the holes out. I mean, there. I've seen foot long rips in frame rails from hole to hole because that's not where you tie a car down and those hooks will just rip it. I mean, these frame rails are just sheet metal. They're thicker gauge sheet metal. I think they're 18 gauge, but they're just sheet metal. So if you see a tear in a frame rail, that's because it got towed. All right. So now we're on the rear frame rail, which Again, there's more factory holes, but the scene, the uh, undercoating does not not look original. That's just a uh, mud dauber. All right, let's see. Oh, you know what? I've got some holes here that don't look original. So that is rust. We have two rot holes right there. Oh, we got another one right there. Well, that's solid in between, but we are getting cancer in the frame rails. Oh, there we go. See? got to keep that up see we're getting more up here hmm Let's see look at this again 
All right, so that doesn't look terrible, but I see rivets. Rivets are not supposed to be anywhere in this car. Hmm, so we have rivets in the frame rails and we have multi-layer trunk pan. And what the hell is that? That is foam. Why is there foam in the rear valence? I know why. We got some shysty guys. That is all rotted out. I can see the back part of the rear cross rail. Oh, we got more rivets. So this rear valence is riveted on. The trunk pan is riveted in. Oh, there's more, more rivets, more rivets. And if you look right here, so you can tell they replaced the trunk pan. This is the cheapo trunk pan because it doesn't have the hole here. The good trunk pan already has the holes pre-drilled. Let's go ahead and look at this uh, wheelhouse. Oh, there's more rivets. I spy junk. Oh, none of this looks original. Oh, see, we have a rotted out trunk extension and we've got more rivets. Oh, we got screws. What the hell are screws doing right there? Hmm. We're gonna have to go look inside the trunk. Now let's look at the inside of the trunk extension. Oh, we got more foam. Oh, we got more rottenness. More rivets. All this stuff is what you wanna look for. So I can tell you right now, this car, we got, oh, see we got big rot holes in the rear valence right here. And if you look right here, see, there's more rust in the trunk pan that's still in there. So there's, they didn't replace all the trunk pan. They left some of the original rotted trunk pan in there because the rear valence support is on top of this. So they never pulled the rear valence supports off to replace that. They just stuck a trunk pan over it. Oh, we got more rivets. Oh, this ain't getting pretty. Oh, look at all that rottenness right there. That's not good. See, you will never see rivets in a car that was done correctly or original. And this is just the one side. Let's go check out the other side. Okay, so pretty much the same thing we saw on the first side, rivets and fresh undercoating. If you see fresh undercoating, don't think, oh, wow, they undercoated it, that was nice. No, think, what are they hiding? And this is a prime example of what these people were hiding. They used expanding foam to fill in the holes in the frame rails. That's foam in there. I mean, this is frame rail. That's main structure of the car that some shysty ass person has filled full of expanding foam, shaved it down, and then sprayed undercoating over it. Look for that. Another thing that you typically see is cardboard, chicken wire. So always, I mean, you know how I found that? Screwdriver went right through it. That's how I found that earlier. This is the whole reason I was making this video is to make people aware of what to look for. That is actually a safety hazard because if this rear frame rail collapsed and this leaf spring basically went through the floor and you're going down the highway, this car is going to react not good. Maybe end up in a ditch, flip it, whatever. So always look for that. And you can see, see these are factory exhaust tips here. There's no hanger. He's got an aftermarket hanger on here because the original tip hanger has nothing to mount to. That is all rotted junkness right there. See, we got more foam right here. I don't want to pick all the foam out of this guy's car, but that's all foam, foam, rivets. We got multi-layer trunk pans. Same thing up there, all rivets on the wheelhouse. That is a no-no. All right, well now that we know the ass into this car is screwed and is gonna need rear frame rails, but on a good note, it's only gonna need the back half of the rear frame rail. It's not gonna need the entire rear frame rail. So this car is going to need back half. Oh, look at this, more rivets. Let's see if we can see the rivets up here. Hmm. Now I can't see them in here, but I bet you there is some rivets inside the trunk pan. All right, well, we're in the trunk now. And one of the things you want to look at too is you want to feel the lip of the trunk lid. See, we got some rottenness on the inside lip of the trunk lid. 
So which means this right here might be full of filler. Actually, I can feel some of it. Yep, it's wavy right there. So I can feel filler in this thing. We got some jets flying over. Good old military base not too far away from here. So the trunk lid, it's repairable, we think. You don't really know until you blast it, but it's got some rod in it. And looky here, look at all them rivets. Those is rivets. And we got sheet metal laid over a trunk extension. Oh man, this just gets prettier. We got, oh, see, they patched. See all that, see those rivets up real high like that? That means that they had patched from here down on the wheelhouse. So, and they riveted it. And then they undercoated it so you can't see it. Okay. They didn't even put a trunk pan all the way to the front. See, they stopped it. Nope, can't see what I'm seeing. There we go. They stopped it right here. There's the scene where they stopped the trunk pan. See, there's the rivets running across here. So, they didn't replace the trunk pan all the way back. Now, we know there's full of rivets. And we know this is all rotted back here. So we know all that's gonna have to be replaced. We don't need to spend any more time on that. And this is a two-piece trunk pan because you can't put a one-piece trunk pan in a charger with the tail panel or the rear valence on it. If you take the rear valence off, you can slide in a one-piece. But don't be afraid when you see a two-piece trunk pan and the rear valence and the, the tail panel is original because you cannot put a one-piece in with those on there. It won't fit in the, in the trunk hole. Now, Let's go ahead and look at that quarter panel again up here in the corner. All right, I see daylight. Oh, let me get in here. All that right there is all rotted. So water is gonna come right down that back window and into the trunk pan. Wait, wait, what the hell? We have rivets holding on the rear window filler panel. Okay, that's probably a trim screw, so don't worry about that. But more rivets. Oh, so this is just this whole rear this whole rear window filler panel is just a sheet metal patch. Okay, another typical spot that rots out on a charger is right here. This is called the rear window filler panel filler panel plenum. It always rots out here or around here. So you gotta watch out for that. This is a typical rot area on a charger. So same thing in that corner. That corner's all rotted out. I see daylight. Trying to hold the camera straight, but it's hard when you're tucked up under here. We have more rivets and sheet metal. And wow, did they actually weld something? So we have rivets with welding this time. They must own a welder after all. See, but if you look at the backside, that doesn't look bad, does it? Hmm, I guess we're not done with this yet. Ooh, that don't stick at all. Let's see. Oops, there you go. Wee! Oh, it's stuck right there. So there's a little bit of metal right there. There's nothing there. Nothing, 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 nothing. Nothing. So, this whole rear window filler panel is junk. Now, this isn't a big deal, but on a charger, you either have one or the other, not both. This is an original SE car. It says on the fender tag, A47 SE car. So this would not be here, only this one. Not a big deal, but just letting people know. We know it's a factory AC car because it has this right here. Also, it has the vents in the dash and it says on the fender tag, plus has holes in the firewall. So now we've pretty much gone over the outside of the car. Oh, another thing to look at too is make sure there's no bubbles under the vinyl top. You'll start seeing bubbles, which means there's rot there. I don't see any bubbles, but again, again, this vinyl top isn't original and it's loose here. See, all this is loose. This is supposed to be all tight. So someone has replaced the vinyl top and did a crappy job. Yep. Now, if you guys see this car in the future, don't worry, this guy's fixing this car. He, he paid decent money for this car. I kind of broke his heart letting him know the condition of the car. So he's going to fix it. So I asked his permission to show this car. All right, now that we've gone over the outside, oh, nope, I lied. Also want to look here. This is a typical rot area here. 
because the water runs down and it gets in the window channel you'll start seeing bubbles and you'll see there's lead right here where the a pillar and the cow meet you'll start seeing that lead pop up because the rust is pushing the lead up and one thing we didn't do yet is look at the door jams let's go ahead and take a look at that so now we're on the inside of the car now you this is not original see these uh all these little push-in caps i'm horrible with names but yeah let me see we got one here one here one here those are not supposed to be there which usually when those are there that means they drilled a hole and they sprayed some rust inhibitor or uh, some sealer to stop the rust so that's usually not a good sign that means the rockers were starting to rust or actually but i take that back too sometimes people did this on east coast cars to preserve the metal to keep it from rotting so it can it can go both ways they could either be hiding something or that was just prevention before the car rotted so it can go either way and you also want to look for so you will see i can still see them on this car you'll see the factory spot welds on this door jam i can still see them here so that means that's not full of a bondo plus you want to make sure there's a seam there if there's not this seam or this lip right here that means they've mudded over this whole area so look for that let's see what else we got here just in the door jam let's go take a look at the front Ooh, i see some holes okay you probably can't see it with the camera but on the front side of this rocker up oh, there's bondo here so there's bondo in the door jam that's not a good sign and we got some filler so there's some rust there's some rust up there which is a typical spot on the very front side of this rocker that is a typical area where it rots likes to rot out right where it meets the see the very front side to where it to where it meets the uh ah, the kick panel on the very front that area rots out let's see uh, looks we got some more filler here see that separating right there that's filler this is another rust area because water runs down and rots this area out so we got all bondo in right here which you're supposed to see bondo on the outside of the car just to fill it out and smooth out some of the imperfections in the body lines you're not supposed to see bondo in this area all right let's look at the front side of the door here eh, not too bad okay on the bottom side of the door we see some pitting not terrible but we do see some pitting on the seam of the door so the door is not completely junk but it's not perfect either now I could show you the other side, but we pretty much got know that it's probably going to be the same. So we're just going to move on. All right, we're back inside your dream car, or at least what you thought. All right, now let's just kind of quickly go through the interior. Obviously, someone has put new interior in this thing. They put a new headliner in it, but they did a really crappy job. It's really saggy, and it's not that good. So. They put all new plastic back there in the back window, which that's a typical rot area. If that wasn't there, I don't want to take it apart, but behind that plastic trim that goes around the headliner and the bottom side of the window, that usually always rots out on a charger. So you always want to look at that corner if those are not there, if you're buying a project car. Now, another thing to look for too is, is the throttle pedal securely mounted to the floor? Okay, this is a typical spot where rust happens. All right, well, it seems to be mounted fairly solid, but we'll take a look under there in a second. I forgot to do that. So, because right here, there's two holes on the on underneath the throttle pedal, and that's where the studs go through the floor. Now, since there's holes there, moisture, water, everything runs down and escapes right there, and it rots it out. So we'll have to look at that. Another rot area is over here. Water runs down from the front window, gets in here, eats that area up and then rots out usually this whole area is junk which actually we saw under the car because once the front window starts to go the water goes on ends up inside the car and rots that out so we know the front window on this car is probably no good and we know the corner over there is probably no good either on the, or the floor anyway on the passenger side so also what i did over here you want to do the exact same thing over there looking at that floor from the bottom most likely the guy won't let you pull the carpet up and you know sometimes they'll probably frown upon you stabbing their car with a screwdriver so if they're not going to do that just take best judgment looking at the car now we can see the guy has got a brand new tack in it reproduction tack he's got brand new dash or uh, bezels 
And this is an SC car, so it does have wood grain. So the wood grain dash bezel is normal. But an SC car will also have a wood grain wheel, so this wheel is not original. Um, those look refurbished, all the buttons. Those never look that good. And for an original speedometer, it actually looks pretty good because normally those speedometers are so faded you can't even read the top. You usually can't even read about 60 miles an hour and over because the sun just eats it up. Now you'll see here, some of our fins are broken. That's pretty typical. Um, now you wanna look under the car and make sure it doesn't have any shabby wiring. What you wanna look for is butt connectors, splices, those trailer uh, oh, crimp, oh, whatever the hell they're called, um, where it basically crimps the wire and gives you an accessory tab. So you wanna look for that stuff. Look for any shabby wiring repairs that's not supposed to be there because if you don't, you might have electrical problems. You wanna open the glove box. Make sure we don't have anything funny going on in there. If the glove box wasn't in the car, you could see better. Make sure there was no nice nest or mice shit or whatever else or messed up wiring. One thing I did notice is that this bezel is not even mounted properly. I had a hard time opening the glove box. I had to push this in just to pop it open. So. Oh, we got some shabby wiring right here. We've got a loose wire hanging out. See, that could have been a positive, and if it grounded out, it could have sparked, could have possibly caused a fire, whatnot. Now, I want to make sure, because this, ten, not a typical rot spot, but it does happen up along here. So, just kind of take a gander. If these screws are really rusty looking, either they didn't replace them, or there's a lot of rot in here. So, just take a look. A lot of times you can't see nothing when the headliner's in it, but if you see anything out of place, let's see, can't really see a whole lot in the headliner because they have all, they have all the trim and everything mounted. So let's move on. I know that's where I normally mount my water temp gauges. I know we said we'll skip the side, but I just had to note that is all full of filler right there. So just make sure you look at that, guys, because that's a typical rot spot on a Charger, or Mopar, B-Body, whatever, is right there. That is all full of filler. That is a no-no. The guy that did this car should be slapped. And then slapped again. So, yep, that's all. You can't even see. You're supposed to be able to see the lip here of where the front door jam meets the rocker. You can't even see it. That's all full of filler. So one thing to note look for filler and also be aware of where body lines and where uh, joints are at connecting to panels look at that we got a motor now all right just a couple of rust spots to let you be aware of on a Mopar B body the battery tray this is typically rotted out because the batteries would leak acid whatever and it would rot them out so we can see here that they had uh, that looks like an original battery tray, but probably out of something else because that is not the same color and Yeah, so they probably pulled that battery tray out of something else All right, we also want to look for structural damage If you see any wrinkles in this inner fender here That is not supposed to be there. Same thing with the other side. If you start seeing some wrinkles See that there's a cut in ACL. There's a wrinkle right there, but that is that's normal. But if you see some excessive wrinkles somewhere in the inner fender, that's not supposed to be there. Also look at the frame rails. It's kind of hard to see on this one, but because everything's in the car, but make sure the frame rails are straight. See that one's straight. Because sometimes these cars are bent and twisted and then they just bond them up to hide everything. See, we got a little bit of pitting back here. It's not too big. And another typical rust spot is behind the hinges. You always want to look behind the hinges because that is a typical rust spot on a B-body. Because the road, the uh, what happens is, on a salt road car, we have the water and salt. It gets flung up and it gets caught up in the top side of the uh, inner fender there, and it will eat up around the hood hinge. Also, look at the hood. Look around the edges. See, this is a typical rust area. Is the bottom side of the hood. It's got a little bit, but nothing major. See, actually, right there, we do have a little bit of rust in this hood, right there. We got a little bit of pitting down the edges. Let's see. Now, a lot of times they'll have rot in these hinges area or look for a buckle. 
sometimes there'll be a buckle here which means somebody has the hinges were stuck and somebody had tried to shut the hood and it buckled the hood so sometimes guys will try and straighten the hood out and then fill it full of filler all right now we do have a little bit of rust i can see it right here i'm, I'm also looking at this car for the first time too i've seen some of the bad areas but i haven't seen some of the small areas right there that is rust in the inner fender that's not terrible you can live with that so just give the car an overall look and looking for any rust bubbles or splits in the paint and overall i would consider the front of this car decent it's not terrible it's not perfect but it's not bad another thing you want to look at is is the engine warm this engine's cold so if you get to the guy's place and you're looking at this car and the engine's warm why is the engine warm why did he start it you want to listen to this car when it first starts and you want to listen to it when it's warm when it first starts that's typically when you'll start hearing a lot of clatter uh rod knock lifters whatnot so you want to listen to the engine when it's cold first fire so let's go ahead and fire this thing up all right so we're on our first fire see all the gauges are cold Come on now. Well, let me see why this thing won't start. I just had to pump it a few more times. See, this car doesn't have a choke on it. So we're gonna have to let it warm up a little bit. I don't hear any clunking, I don't hear any clattering, so, so far the motor sounds decent. We're gonna have to go under the hood and get a better listen though. Also, when it first fires, you want to look for smoke out the exhaust. Usually that's uh, piston rings or sometimes valve stem seals so or excessive guide wear. Um, so you want to look for that too. But typically piston rings, they're just going to smoke constantly. It generally has that problem. Alright, so I don't hear anything funny coming out of the exhaust. Sammy always attacks the exhaust. Get it, Sam, get it. See? That's just her thing. She bites exhaust. But we don't see any smoke, and it's not like a weird engine note. So let's go back to the front. Yeah, it's actually very quiet under the engine, or under the hood. I don't hear no clunking, I don't hear no clattering. The engine's still cold, so we don't want to just wrap on it. But see, we got fuel pressure. No smoke. So overall, the motor sounds pretty decent. It sounds pretty solid. Oh, here comes lightning. Hi, lightning. All right, now it's up to temperature good enough. Let's see where it's at. One sixty. So that's good enough. Now we can go drive it. And one thing I forgot to note too is, we get in the shade here, is. Before you fire the engine, damage. the sun keeps following us. All right, here we go. So before you fire the engine, you wanna, we can't see what the condition the motor is inside of it, but at least we can get a tall tail sign by pulling the dipstick. So pull the dipstick and smell it. If it smells like gas really bad, it's probably been running really rich and it might be washing out the cylinder walls. But also, if you see any fine metal particles on the dipstick, could be bearing material. Now that's a far stretch, you probably will never see that, but we can't see what's inside the motor, so you at least want to look at that because that'll tell us what is inside of it. Of course, they probably just changed the oil, and also they could have put rebuild in a can, which is why you want to start the motor and let it run all the way through. Because a motor that's cold, that rebuild in a can, the oil is real thick, so it won't rod knock or anything like that. But when the engine gets up to temperature, that stuff will thin out, and then you'll start to hear some ticking and some knocking if the bearings are worn. So that's why you want to listen to the motor cold and listen to the motor hot or warm. And also, before you fire it, pull the cap and look inside, see if there's a whole lot of excessive rust in there. But it's been up to temperature, and it's still real quiet under the hood, no knocking, no ticking. So now we can go ahead and give it a rest see what it does. Well, sounded good.
it's pretty normal. Didn't hear anything excessive. Okay, also, you want to look right here. I forgot to note this. This is also a typical rust spot on, on a charger or a B body. Is right here where the core support meets the inner fender and the, and the fender. All right here in this corner. Same thing, salt gets up in there and starts to eat it up. Right there, we can see it's kind of bubbly, a little crusty, you start seeing rust right there. On this side, they had bondo did, oh, actually, you know, I didn't even notice this. We see crack right there on top of the fender, crack right here on top of the fender, and this has all been smoothed over. So this area right here has all been bondoed up and mudded to hide the rust underneath that fender. Let's go drive it. All right, now we have to go for our first test drive. What the hell? Oh, what the hell? Wussy edition. All right, so we got it running. It's in the street on level ground. So you want to make sure the power steering's good. Don't hear any funny noises, no whining, no squealing. So that's all good. Now let's go ahead and go through the gears. So we got park. Let's go ahead and move this over here. Park, reverse, so it backs up. Neutral, but the indicator is way off. See that right there? It's like in between. Drive, two, wait. There's supposed to be one more gear. It won't go down any farther. So, this shift linkage is adjusted incorrectly to where it won't even give me first gear. So I'll put it back and drive. We have to feel for it since the indicator's way off. Where's Sammy? We have to look out for Sammy. Oh, missed it. There we go. See, the indicator's way off. We're in between D and two right now. Now, the speedometer, those are gonna bounce. That's pretty typical. It probably has the original cable in it. If we know it, see, look, I'm going straight and the steering wheel's off. So we know it needs an alignment. Now, let's go ahead and hit the brakes and let go of the wheel. Oh, see that? It just pulled slightly to the right. But this car's got drum brakes on it, so they probably need to be adjusted. If it was disc brakes and it was pulling, that means we do have a real bad alignment issue. You want to listen for any noises as you're driving clunks any clatters squealing so i don't hear anything right now it seems feels pretty smooth let's see hit the brakes again no squealing I hear a little howl from the transmission oh you want to check how it shifts too so it's well oh, actually i do hear some rear brakes See, it shifts pretty normal. It's got a little pull to the right, no, no big deal. Slight, steering wheel's off. So, it just needs a minimal, I bet the caster and camber's okay, it's probably just the toe is off, or the alignment of the toe. They got it shifted, so they need to straighten out the wheel and redo the, the uh, toe on it. Now, let's go ahead and check our electrical. So we got a left blinker. Oh yeah, the hood, the hood blinker. You guys probably can't see this because of daylight, but the blinkers are working. We got left. We got right and then have somebody with you or at least have the owner of the car get in it and hit the electrical or test the electrical I mean you want to make sure there's brake lights make sure the headlights work pop up and then uh, I see another thing here too is we want to check see this is an amp gauge now if this thing was not working that means they probably bypassed it see like I'll rev it up a little bit see how the needle went into the positive See, now if I shut the engine off, that needle will go into the negative, which means it's discharging. You always want to make sure the needle goes into the positive when you rev it up or uh, when you're driving. Even at, at idle, if it goes to neutral, that's okay. These alternators tend to not put out a lot of amperage. But as long as when you give it a little bit of throttle, the needle moves up, you should be fine. Oh, man, these rear brakes are shot. They're making a lot of noise. See, things you want to take note of. These rear brakes are making a lot of noise. So, you want to make sure the oil pressure. Now, these gauges are never really accurate, accurate, but if the needle is showing oil pressure, you're probably fine. It, I mean, if it's like zero to 20, then it's 
probably not good. But as for right now, we can know it has oil pressure. I don't hear any clacking, no clunking. And the lifters are not making any noise. So if the lifters were making noise, that would probably mean we have really low to no oil pressure, which I knew it had oil pressure because the lifters ain't making noise, but, and we can see from the gauge that it does. And you want to drive it for a while to make sure it's not going to overheat. These cars typically will overheat with the hood down and idling, especially if it's a big block. Well, everything here seems to be working. Hit the flashers. Okay, the flashers don't work. Now, I know the AC and the radio in this car don't work. We've got an aftermarket radio right there. But the main thing for the test drive is just to make sure the overall driving of the car is okay. See, it, it, cl it clunked a little bit when it shifted, so it probably has got some slop in the drive shaft. Or it's got some slop in the ring, ring and pinion gear, but it's not bad. But like, these rear brakes are definitely making some noise. Let's go ahead and park this sucker real quick. All right, now the main reason I did this video is this car in point right here. This guy brought this car to me because the engine kept shutting off when it got up to, or it'd be running for 20, 30 minutes, the engine would just straight shut off. Now, this guy wants to put a Hellcat in it, and he wants to do a whole bunch of work to this thing, make it faster and handle better and all that stuff. And he had mentioned that it does have a little bit of bubbles and rust in the body, and so I just got to looking at it a little bit, and then I saw the rear frame rails. And that's when I told the guys, like, well, you might want to pay, put some attention to the back of this car before you put that big nasty motor in it. So got to looking at it more and found that the car is a cobbled together, mm, I wouldn't say piece of junk, but it's a hack job. So the guy was a little upset. I mean, he paid decent money for this car and he got had. Now, if he would have known what he was looking at, maybe he wouldn't have bought the car or at least haggled the guy way down on the price. So the main reason I'm making this video is just so for you guys, the people that are wanting a Charger, they don't get screwed on their dream car. The car they've been saving for and end up getting screwed by some hack job builder seller. So that was the main reason. Um, now, hopefully you guys will learn a little something. You can go more into detail, or I could go more into detail on a car going through it with a fine tooth comb, but when you're going to buy a car, these are typically the things that you'll look at. Now, you look at the overall condition of the body, you look underneath the car for the rust, you wanna know how the motor runs, how it sounds, look at the electrical, um, and how it drives. Does the transmission shift? Does it make any noises? Are the brakes okay? Um, you know, is it stop in a straight line? Is the steering messed up? Just the typical things you look for on a drive. Um, but, which all that stuff, anybody could typically repair. But when it comes to rotted out junk cars, there's a lot of guys that hide stuff. I mean, I've seen foam, cardboard, chicken wire, poster board, anything to hold Bondo foam or or a panel in, or rivets, you know, anything to hold anything in place, I've seen it. And you just want to make sure you're not buying one of those cars because those people just, they just want your money. They don't care about you. They just want that money and they're going to Bondo up a car just to get it and hopefully you're one of those people that doesn't know what you're looking for. So be aware of what you're looking at and just don't get had. So that way, when you do have the money and you can buy your dream car, you can enjoy it and you won't be disappointed. Or you can catch the guy in a lie. <laughs> That's always fun too, when you can catch the guy in a lie and show him how much of a piece of junk his car is when he is in fact a liar and a cheat. So, but, I don't know. I hope you guys learned something from this video. Uh, this is just a quick one. I mean, I probably made this whole thing in 30, 40 minutes. So anyway, I got to get to work. I got to make some money. So I'll holler at you guys later. And if you go look at a car, just remember to look at all the bad areas and how it drives, how it sounds, and just don't get stuck with a lemon. So anyway, see you guys later.